So today we are going to be talking about everything fitness. I've been a pretty big part of my life, I would say since high school. I started working out with a personal trainer in high school while I was modeling just to make sure that I was staying under, you know, the standard model measurements. I started working out with a trainer in college as well as starting to try new classes and going to the gym. And then during COVID, of course, all of that was closed. And so I started doing more at-home workouts and kind of building up my at-home workout equipment collection. And now I just feel like I'm at the point where I really enjoy working out. It isn't a chore. I just finally feel like I have my routine down pat. So I just wanted to share all the things that I have learned over the past couple years and the things that I really love to make working out easier as well as some equipment that I really like to use and kind of how to get started if you're new to fitness or exercising. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is my fitness routine and how I like to stack workouts. So my ideal week in terms of stacking my workouts would be that I'm working out five times a week, whether that be a class or an at-home workout, and then I'm taking a walk four times a week outside or on the treadmill. Obviously when it's nice outside, I prefer to do it outside. And then making sure I'm working in recovery days to make sure that I don't get injured and that I'm really taking the time to stretch. The way that I have it right now is that I will work out for three days in a row, take the fourth day off to recover. That could be doing a yoga class or taking a walk or just doing a stretching routine or doing nothing at all and then I do another two days of working out and then the seventh day rest you know <laughs> like the Sabbath and I find that this schedule and this way of stacking workouts really keeps me from getting burned out because by that third day especially if I have incorporated weights I'm gonna be really sore I'm gonna be tired of driving to a workout class or getting all my equipment out to do at-home workout and I get that rest and then another two days and rest. Also helps prevent injuries. So I have scoliosis and I have always had trouble with my back and I have learned the heavier of weights I go or the harder I go in a workout, yes, that will strengthen my back, but I also need time for my back to recover and not get overworked or else I'm gonna end up pulling something or just having more back pain than anyone wants to have. So say I have gone lighter that week and I'm not crazy sore but I still need a recovery. You can do a slow flow yoga class or I really like the app, I think it's called Stretch It and they have a ton of different programs that you can do for stretching and it will even give you a little notification every day and you can set the time to do your stretching. I'm doing the splits class right now because I take ballet and I just want to be able to do all of those high leg moves and make them look really beautiful. So that's what I'm doing for my stretch it class right now. My favorite way to work out is to have a lot of variety in my routine. I just love a ton of different workout classes. I would say Pilates is probably up there as my top favorite, but I love the spin class, I love boxing, I love bar. And so I try to make sure I'm not doing the same thing every day. Because again, I'll just get tired of it and burned out. And that kind of goes into our second thing that I want to talk about, and that's types of workouts. In my mind, there are a couple of different categories of workout classes, and that would probably be cardio classes, strength building classes, stretching classes, and at-home workouts. So I like to incorporate at-home workouts in my routine. However, I definitely feel more motivated when I go to a class. But obviously classes can be expensive. So I really like ClassPass and they have it in most cities I think now, which just gives you a set number of credits to use every month. And you can use those credits towards whatever class you like. Some classes are more credits than others. They even have wellness things on there like massages and facials and that kind of thing. I've never used it for that, but they do have that as an option. ClassPass is also really great because they always have a great first month deal going on. I think the first month that I had it was like five dollars for 50 credits or something and 50 credits will get you a good amount of classes. I would say most classes, at least in Dallas, cost between five to seven credits. So you're getting 10 workout classes for a month, which is really, really nice. And they have multiple levels of 
options you can use. I just think it's a really great platform, especially if you're starting working out. ClassPass is perfect because you get to try a bunch of different classes out to see what you like. Even though I love a lot of different workout classes, there are definitely some that I have found out that I don't like. I hate running, so if it's a running class, I am not going to do it. I will take occasionally a class at this place called Tread Bar because they break it up with like, I think it's 10 minutes of running, 10 minutes of Pilates, 10 minutes of running, 10 minutes of Pilates, and that I can handle, but I am just not a runner at all, so I try to stay away from those classes. I don't like anything too, too intense. Like I said, my back just can't handle crazy weights, so if it's going to be an actual weightlifting class, um, it's not just, you know, light dumbbells, I do try to stay away from that just to make sure I don't get injured. Um, but yeah, this has all been trial and error of trying classes and seeing what I like, and I think that's what class class is so perfect for. And I know walking into a fitness class for the first time can be a little intimidating if you don't know what to expect. So I wanted to go through a couple of my favorite classes and just kind of give you the rundown of what you'll get into with those classes. If you're a huge fitness person and you've done these classes before, this is not going to be helpful to you. But if you're someone really wanting to start out and get into exercising, I think I would have loved to know what I was getting into with these classes. So the first thing I absolutely love is Pilates. I just think Pilates is the best workout for my body. I love mat Pilates and reformer Pilates. So with mat Pilates, that is just gonna be a simple on the mat workout. And that can incorporate dumbbells or weighted bands or ankle weights or a Pilates ball. Mat Pilates really takes advantage of those props to help you get a better workout. And those are gonna be your simple on the mat moves, push-ups, planks, donkey kicks, fire hydrants, that kind of thing. A branch of Mat Pilates, which is in a heated room. So just hot Pilates. And that is again gonna be your same Pilates class just in a heated room like you would have for hot yoga. I love hot Pilates. I just think you get a great workout because that heat ups your heart rate. And so you're getting that little bit of cardio while you're also getting a good strength workout. And if you're in Dallas, you need to try out Shine Hot Pilates because it is the best class ever. They incorporate hip hop dance moves into the workout and it's so much fun. With reformer classes, you are going to be on a Pilates reformer and Pilates reformer is basically just a pulley system. You have your carriage that sits in the middle. You're, sometimes you won't have a back platform, but you'll always have a front and potentially back platform. And your moves are all gonna be on the reformer. The best way to get prepared for a reformer class is to make sure you get to your class 15 minutes early. And most places are gonna give you a rundown of the reformer, but just make sure you ask for one either way. And then the instructor or someone who works there will give you the full rundown. With a lot of reformer classes, the instructor is not on the reformer with you. So you won't really be able to see what the instructor is doing. So it's good if you are picking your spot in a reformer class to pick a spot next to someone or to ask them to put you on a spot next to someone who has been there a couple times. So you can kind of glance over and see what moves they're doing because all the Pilates reformer moves have a name to them. So it'll say giant wheelbarrow on the back and you'll be like, what the heck is a giant wheelbarrow on the back? <laughs> so you kind of have to look over and see what someone else is doing because the instructor is going to explain how to get into the move, but it's always helpful to have someone next to you so you can kind of copy their movement. Definitely make sure you're still listening to the instructor because obviously people do movements wrong. You don't want to be, you know, copying someone who's doing it wrong, but just don't be afraid to be a little confused in your first class because I promise by probably even as soon as the third class you're going to get more into the rhythm of things and moving into those different positions. Just be aware that maybe your first class you're going to be confused and it's totally fine because every single person that starts Pilates reformer classes has to go through that. So the next category of classes that I really like is a bar class. Bar classes get their name from the bar in a ballet studio and that is really what a bar class is trying to be like. It's trying to incorporate those really small movements that ballerina training goes through. Ballet really targets those little tiny muscles that you don't work on an everyday basis and so when you go to a bar class it's going to be a lot of really small 
tight movements. You're not going to be doing, you know, huge bicep curls or, you know, regular squats. You're going to be doing these positions in the bar. Maybe your heels are turned in and your toes are turned out and you're in a tiny little squat and you're just moving up and down barely an inch. You are going to feel the burn in a bar class because the smaller movements you do, the more your muscles will get fatigued and you're going to start to shake. And they always tell you that the shake is good. And again, the more you go, the less you will shake. But shake is actually what you want in a bar class because it means your muscles actually are getting fatigued and you're targeting those little tiny muscles in your legs or your arms or whatever that you don't work out on an everyday basis. So don't be embarrassed if you go to a bar class and you're like, I am two seconds into this workout and my legs are shaking controllably. Totally fine. I think the best thing to do is, you know, push through it as long as you can because that's what the class is for. But obviously if, you know, if you're in pain, stop. Also, no one is going to judge you if you just stand up for a second, shake out your legs and get right back into the workout because everyone, again, goes through that. I also really love spinning classes. So again, spinning classes just on a stationary bike. There are a lot of different types of spinning classes, but I would say most studios now say that they ride to the beat of the music. This is something I wanted to touch on because I think that again can be very intimidating and I think some studios do this a little better than others. Obviously there are studios that will, you know, call you out if you're not on the beat. And sometimes the beat is so fast, it's extremely hard to get on the beat. I haven't taken spinning classes for years, and sometimes I still can't get on the beat because my legs just don't move that fast. So I would say the best thing is to find a studio that encourages you to like push your limits to be on the beat without, they're not going to call you out if you're not on the beat. I really like Coast Cycle here in Dallas. They always play great music. The instructors are so kind and helpful and they don't try to make you feel bad if you're not exactly on the beat. There's also choreography involved or they call it choreography. So that's going to entail doing things with your arms or taking your hips back. So they'll ask you to do a crunch while you're cycling and that is just doing a, almost like a push-up motion on your handlebars while you're still moving your feet or they'll like ask you to bring your hips back. So if you're up on the bike they'll ask you to bring your hips back and forward. And it's honestly a really, it just adds a little bit of extra workout into your class because you're working your abs and your arms while your legs are moving the whole time. So it's a cardio class, but you're still hitting every part of your body. The next thing I wanted to talk about are some accessories that will help you in your fitness journey. I want to put a disclaimer out that you don't need these things to have a fitness routine. This is also a good place to talk about at-home workouts because you can find incredible free at-home workouts on YouTube and I'll list a few of my favorite ones below but these accessories you do not have to buy all of these when you're first starting out you don't have to buy them ever but if you're already in your fitness routine a little bit and you want to go forward I have found that these accessories really help that and they help you save money at-home workouts are absolutely great you don't even have to have a mat or dumbbells you can find a ton of body weight workouts on youtube and you can literally just use a rug in your apartment as your mat or lay down a towel and that can be your workout space that's what i did when we were in covid and i didn't have you know my dumbbell set yet i was just doing body weight at home workouts and it's still a really great option if you don't want to spend that money if you do these are the ones that i really like also, before we get into this, I just wanted to say that although I actually am trained as a bar instructor, I taught in a bar studio in my hometown for almost a year, I think, maybe a little over a year. So I feel like I can give sound fitness advice, but always consult your doctor before you start making major fitness changes in your life. Just needed to get that out there. The first accessory that I have is a yoga mat. There are a ton of great options out there. I actually don't know what brand mine is. This was given to me as a gift when I left my workout studio that I used to teach in when I moved back to Dallas. Um, so this is mine. I would say the things to look for in a yoga mat, thickness. So you want yoga mat that is thick enough to really cushion 
your body, because that's essentially what a yoga mat is. It's when you're doing workouts on the floor and you want a little bit of extra cushion underneath your wrists and your knees. It just gives you, you know, that space to work out in, but you don't want it to be too thick where it's going to trip you up. Because if you have, you know, a two inch thick foam mat that you're trying to work out on or you're trying to jump on, it's going to trip you up. I really like the aloe yoga mats. I really like the Lululemon yoga mats. I think those are both really great options. You can also find plenty of less expensive options on Amazon. It's obviously harder to find one on Amazon because you can't feel it, um, but they have a great return policy, so you can just do one like that. And to go on top of your yoga mat, you are gonna want a yoga mat towel. So this is a special towel made for your yoga mat that has grips on one side and an absorbent towel on the other side. So this is mostly used for hot classes, hot Pilates like I was talking about, hot yoga, there are even hot bar classes, because when you are in these hot classes, you're in a room that can be up to over 100 degrees, and so you're gonna be sweating a lot, and this keeps you from slipping. So when you lay it down, you'll lay it grip side down onto your yoga mat, and it will absorb basically your sweat while you're working out and keep you from slipping everywhere. I have gotten to the point where I hardly ever use yoga mats without one of these because I just like that extra grip that it gives me. And these are all easily washable. A lot of hot places will require that you use one of these, basically for liability so you don't slip and fall. But they're always available to rent at places too. Also in the realm of not slipping, we have Pilates grip socks. So if you take a reformer class, more times than not, they are going to require that you wear grip socks. Some studios will give you a pair for free at your first class. Most places will make you buy a pair, but I just buy little packs of them on Amazon or other workout places. I really like these. They have a little cross on them like a ballet slipper. Really good grip on the back. If you decide you really like Pilates performer classes and you want to keep going, I would definitely suggest investing in some of these. It's just going to save you money in the long term because you don't have to buy a pair every time you go. Um, and it's nice to have multiple options because it never fails that I want to go to a reformer class and all my flying socks are dirty. So it's nice to have backups. These came in a pack of three on Amazon for $20. So you can just grab me some of those. The next thing I think is really great to have if you decide that you prefer at-home workouts than being in a class environment. And that is definitely a couple sets of dumbbells. These are just three pound weights. I got all of my dumbbells at Target. They always have them in stock. They have a couple of different brands. I think the best thing to start out with is either a set of three pounds or five pounds because it's not going to be too heavy where, you know, you're if you've never worked out before, um, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is the more you use it. Now I have a set of three, five, eight, and 10, and it just takes your at-home workouts up a notch, which is really, really great to have. Also, if you don't have a gym membership, Buying a couple pairs of dumbbells is a lot cheaper than an entire gym membership. Like I said, there are a ton of at-home workouts on YouTube, but I really enjoy the form app. That is Sammy Clark's workout app. She just has the best workouts. She has them broken down by time, by type. She always is running some sort of new program. I think right now she's doing a Pilates and strength program. She's done a legs program. She also has started to introduce recipes and meal plans on her app, which is really great. The next two things I have are very specific to one type of class, and that is cycling and boxing. So I have these cycle shoes. Now, most cycling places have the style of bike where you have to clip in instead of having a toe cage over your shoe, which is honestly better because it just keeps you more secure in the bike. But the only problem is, most places require you to rent them every time you go. So if you have decided that you absolutely love spinning and your place makes you rent a pair every time you go, I would definitely suggest investing in a pair of these. These were only $50, I believe, and Coast charged you, I believe, $5 per rental. So 10 classes in, I've already paid for these. Again, if you are just starting out in your fitness journey, do not buy cycling shoes. You might decide you don't even like cycling. But if you do and you know that you're gonna keep incorporating a spin class into your workout routine. These are a great option to save a little money and you can get them in a cute color. And you don't have to worry about rinsing them when someone else has already worn them. If you think about it too long, <laughs> I'll just leave it there. The next thing I have is similar to the shoes in that these are very specific to a boxing class. These are just boxing gloves. The boxing studio that I go to requires me to rent boxing gloves. 
Um, and I really, really enjoy boxing. It's such a different workout from anything that I do. It's just a really fun workout, and I think it's really nice to get your aggression out on a um, boxing bag. But these, again, were not super expensive, and if you know you're going to do boxing classes regularly, it's nice to have a pair that you don't have to rent because they're your own you're not putting on someone else's boxing gloves and you're not having to spend the money to rent them every single time you go. The next thing I wanted to talk about are workout sets and some of my favorite brands. So the top that I'm wearing right now is from Aloe. This is their Wild Thing Sports Bra. It's so secure, um, but I think it's also really flattering. I love the V-neck. I love the little ruching detail right here. It's one of my favorite sports bras to wear. Um, I think Aloe does a great job with workout clothes. These are their vapor leggings, which I really like too. I also really like Lululemon. Like that's like the signature workout girl brand, Lululemon. I also really like the brand Champion. I have a set that I absolutely love wearing from them. I always get compliments. The leggings are a really nice material. I feel like they're tight without being restrictive. Um, I love the detailing on the bra with that little peekaboo on the top. I also have this jacket from them that I really like. This is another thing that I discovered that I really like is having a workout jacket to put on after I finish a class in the winter. If you have gone, you know, really hard in the class, you're taking a hot class and you're sweating a ton, you don't want to put on something that's going to be really thick and kind of like hug onto that sweat. I find this all the time when I go to Shine Hot Pilates. I am sweaty after a class and it might be, you know, 40 degrees outside, and so I don't need to be going out in a sports bra, but I'm too hot to put on something really thick on top of it. So having a couple jackets in that workout material is the perfect solution because it's gonna help wick that moisture away and not feel like you're suffocating underneath a big heavy sweatshirt or coat or whatever. I also really love this one from Sweaty Betty. This is their running jacket, and I love the way that it has these little pleat details on the side. I would love this in a couple different colors because the fabric is just perfect for putting on after workout. Again, it wicks the moisture away. It doesn't get sticking to my skin. I just think that the fabric is so, so nice. It's perfect to put on after a workout. The last thing I wanted to talk about is recovery and my gym bag essentials. No matter what class you go to or what kind of workout you go to, you are going to need to be hydrating afterwards because you're going to be sweating. You want to make sure that you're really getting proper hydration in. This is the Takia 32 ounce water bottle. You can buy this on Amazon and at Target, I think. It's stainless steel, so it keeps your water cold. It has a great spout. I always need a straw. I don't know what it is about drinking water out of a normal cup. I just always need a straw. I also really like the Noon Daily Hydration um, tablets. These are actually the immunity, so they have vitamin C in them. These are great. They are basically just salt and sugar. I'm not a nutritionist, so please don't take me at my word on this, but I just always find that these help after a really hard workout class, especially if I have done a hot yoga or hot Pilates class. I think it's really easy to get dehydrated after those if you don't properly hydrate afterwards. Um, so I just like to take one of these after or even before. I can sometimes get headaches during a hot yoga class, especially at the end of class if you go into a down dog. I just feel like all the blood either rushes out of my head or into my head and it gives me a headache, but if I take one of these before, that helps that. This is my little gym bag. So I don't take a huge gym bag because one, my actual gym is in my apartment building, so I don't have to, you know, take a ton of things. And when I go to a workout class, they have all the equipment that I need. Some of my essentials, kind of getting unready after a workout class is always a change of clothes. No matter what workout class you're doing, you want to make sure that you're immediately getting out of your sweaty clothes. It's just not, especially if you are a woman, it's just not great to be sitting around in those sweaty clothes. And most places will have some sort of bag for you to put your sweaty clothes into so they're not getting all in your bag. I like to reuse my grocery bags with that and just put those in there and then immediately get them into the wash when you get home. I also really like to bring makeup wipes. So I know people are very controversial about makeup wipes, but I just think they're perfect for after a workout just to make sure that you're getting all that sweat off of your face to keep you from breaking out. I also take this like all over my body just to quickly wipe off before I put my clean clothes on. I really like to work out after work. I like to go straight from work to a workout class. And so I will normally have makeup on. And so just to use these and take the makeup off either before or after my workout class is really nice to keep my skin clear. And then normally I will have some sort of lip balm 
and mini moisturizer to put on after that because my skin is way too dry to be cleansing it with the wipe of life and not putting anything on afterwards. And yeah, obviously diet is a very big part of your fitness journey. And the one thing I want to say is that if you are starting to work out pretty regularly, you want to make sure that you're replenishing your body, especially with protein and carbs. I think a lot of people only think about protein when it comes to, you know, bulking up or building muscle or getting fit, but carbs are so important too. Abby Sharp has a ton of information on this and I'll link some of her videos down below. As much as protein is very important after workout, carbs are also very important. And I'll let Abby Sharp do all of the scientific explaining since I am not a nutritionist, but that's something to keep in mind as well. And I think that is all we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun making this. Fitness is such a big part of my life, like I said, and I finally feel like I am in my perfect routine right now. It's only been like 10 years, but we finally got it down. If you would like to see more fitness content, let me know. I love talking about this stuff. I love sharing what I'm doing and new workouts and that kind of thing. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.